And greetings. Welcome to another edition of the Steve Day Show. Hope you had a great weekend live and on demand. We are here on Blaze TV radio and podcast. My name, if you are new around here, my name is Steve Dace. His name is Aaron McIntyre. His name is Todd Erzin. And then one day we may have the pleasure of learning your name because you emailed the show. Steve at stevedace.com. That's D-E-A-C-E. You can also like us on Facebook, MeWe Parlor and Gab. Uh, just look for Steve Dace there or follow us at Steve Dace Show on Getter and Twitter. And then you can get clips of the show that you can watch without any censorship and free of cost uh, when you go to rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show as well. Again, that is rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. I got a great note over the weekend about our partners at Patriot Mobile from, I think it's David Klupel. He says, my wife and I finally took your advice. We made the switch to Patriot Mobile last week. Their customer service was phenomenal. They made the switching process easy. The company was extremely responsive whenever we had questions. And so happy now that we have a mobile phone company that doesn't hate our guts. Also loved the Constitution booklet they sent us in the setup package. All in all, one of the best customer service experiences I have ever had. So if you want to see... Put them to the test. See if you don't have a similar experience. We did. When we made the switch last fall, you're going to pretty much get the same coverage you get from the big boys because everybody pretty much uses the same towers. We have pretty much all the same coverage we had for years from T-Mobile, even upgraded our phones in the process. So if you want to give it a shot right now with our friends at Patriot Mobile, first of all, let them know if you're a veteran or first responder. They've got extra savings for you as a way of saying thank you for your service. For the rest of us, they've got specials all the time right now. Get a free activation with my first name, Steve, as your offer code. When you head over to patriotmobile.com slash Steve, that's patriotmobile.com slash Steve, or you can give them a call at 9 9- 72 Patriot. All right, we mentioned Gab earlier. Our Gab followers, uh, they get to take over the next hour of the show. Our weekly Ask Me Anything is coming up in hour number two. So we look forward to seeing what questions uh, you have conjured up. And Todd, you have called from the herd. Of course, I've not seen any of these. So these will all be questions the way I like them, blind sides. So we are looking forward to that coming up in the second hour of the program. Bob Vanderplatz will join us here at the bottom of the first hour here in just about 30 minutes. But before we get to all of that, we begin, as we always do, with Aaron's rundown of what happened while we were away. What happened while we were away, brought to you by Changes May Be a Coming. Elon Musk, the billionaire mogul, is now the largest shareholder of Twitter, Twitter stock prices jumped 25% on the news. Musk purchased a 9.2% stake in Twitter. This comes the same weekend. Former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey publicly threw shade, albeit indirectly at Twitter, saying his old company took part in damaging the internet. Musk in recent weeks has talked about the need for a neutral social media platform that values free speech principles and has said Twitter doesn't really live up to that. Moving on, here's a Kamala gook update. He said that Vladimir Putin um, should no longer be the leader of Russia. Do you agree? Listen, I think that you, you frame the point quite accurately and well, which is America's policy has been and will continue to be focused on the real issue at hand, which is one, the needs of the Ukrainian people, but also ensuring that there's going to be serious consequence for Vladimir Putin and Russian aggression as it relates to Ukraine, which is why our policy from the beginning has been about ensuring that there are going to be real costs exacted against Russia in the form of severe sanctions, which we know are having a real impact and an immediate impact, not to mention the, the longer term impact. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky, whose country, if you hadn't heard, is in the middle of a hot war with Russia, took the time to drop in on the Grammys last night. On our land, we are fighting Russia, which brings horrible silence with its bombs, the dead silence. Feel the silence with your music. Feel it today to tell our story. Zelensky was also asked by Fox News about the neo-Nazi forces fighting for him in Ukraine. So Azov was one of those many battalions. 
They are what they are. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban and his party won a resounding victory in that country's elections yesterday. In his victory speech, Orban declared that Christian democratic politics, conservative politics, and patriotic politics won and blasted the Hungarian and the European and Western left, including George Soros, as failures. Here's Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg smiling like a Cheshire cat when talking about regular Americans being unable to afford gas. Here's the thing to remember. Even if all of the oil we use in the USA were made in the USA, the price of it is still subject to powers and dynamics outside of the USA, which means that until we achieve a form of energy independence that is based on clean energy created here at home, American citizens will still be vulnerable to wild price hikes like we're seeing. Headline at Yahoo Finance, Silicon Valley distances itself from oligarchs. Anywho, great takes on Twitter from over the weekend. We'll start with NFL Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, who tweeted, quote, I'd rather pay 20 bucks a gallon than have Trump in office. Here's Parkland school shooting survivor turned anti-gun political pawn turned Harvard student David Hogg, quote, uteruses should not be more regulated than guns. And this from the Washington Post's Jennifer Rubin. If it weren't for inflation, this president's economic performance would be unmatched. Speaking of WAPO, meet one of the worst people on the planet. This is a professional cancel artist who works at Washington Post named Taylor Lorenz, who is sad because people don't like it when she cancels people she disagrees with. I've had to remove every single social tie. I had severe PTSD from this. I, I contemplated suicide. It got really bad. You feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating. And terrifying. It's horrifying. I'm so sorry. You're fine. You're it's fine. overwhelming. It's really hard. A dude who feels pretty has been barred from competing in a women's cycling championship after actual women competing in the event threatened to boycott. Zach Bridges, who currently goes by a different name, was cut from the Women's British National Omnium Championship on Saturday. This would have been his first race against women. Here's Republican Maryland Governor Larry Hogan blasting Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and the anti-groomer legislation just passed in the state. I think the, the bill was kind of absurd uh, and uh, not something that would have happened in our state. Have you read the bill, Larry? Well, I didn't, law, I, I didn't really actually see the details of the legislation, but the whole the whole thing seems like uh, just a, a you know, crazy fight. And finally, feast your eyes upon this. This is the beta poster for the upcoming film called Nefarious, which Steve posted on his socials this weekend. For those of you listening, well, you just have to see it to appreciate it. And that's what happened while we were away. So let's get this out of the way really quick. And... I got in a little trouble over the weekend for posting that, but author's privilege, I'm going to call it. What, um, give me your feedback, then we'll move on with the rest of the show. Uh, it's appropriately powerful and ambiguous at the same time. It leaves you having all kinds of question marks, which... It, it something titled nefarious should but there's there's a rawness a lethality to it it's good it hits the mark so this is now the point in this process where i'm not saying i regret i'm just a little bit jealous i'm a little bit jealous uh maybe that's too strong a word too of people who have not read the script and boy that sounds really really condescending but i want to be able to experience this without knowing everything and i'm not going to go any further without knowing um without knowing everything that went into it i would like to be hit with some of this stuff fresh i will just say everything in that poster is intentional i will just leave it at that everything is there's nothing that's just like oh we're just going for sh no everything's intentional i think it's i think it's um, I think it's perfect uh, wetting of the appetite. Hmm. I, and yes, I've, many have asked. We did, um, you know, Sean's getting up there in years. Uh, Sean Patrick Flannery, who plays our lead role, uh, Nefarious. So we did have to airbrush uh, my physique in there 
Um, but I mean, everything in there, everything else in there is real. So I did get a lot of questions and yes, that's true. I'm just riding you the coattail. So no, whatever no, you say, boss. No, no, that's not believable. Um, yeah, he's like, I know he's older than me. He's like some black belt in jujitsu or something. So that is actually Sean. That's, that's really him actually. Yeah. Looking that ripped at 50 and making the rest of us cry. Right. You should have seen when I, when we were, when I was working with the, the design, uh, the, our design guy for the last couple of weeks on this, and I showed some ver beta, beta, betas of a beta to our small group just to get their reaction. You should have seen the looks on the faces of the women in our small group when that photo <laughs> started, when that photo showed up in a couple of the beta versions. I mean, eyes lit up. It was like the day after Christmas and they were like, tell me more about that one. Okay. Did, so did anybody that you talked to overtly have the same comment I did to the tattoo? Um, I don't want to get into what specific comments okay, that's people why gave I'm being... me. Yeah. Because I don't, I don't want to, no, I don't want to get into anything, but yes, to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. So it's up on our Twitter feed. I don't know how much longer it will be there, but uh, if you want to see it, you may. And the reaction to it has been overwhelmingly positive. I, I just wanted to see before we went too far down to, from concept to investment into a marketing message for the film. I wanted to see um, if that would, if that messaging would resonate and it has resonated uh, from what I've seen with my social media traffic over the last few days. Aaron's montage is brought to you by a brand new partner we have here on the show. They're called Tyga coolers and they are super strong. They come in lots of colors and they are customized for personal or corporate gifts. They sent the three of us customized coolers uh, about a month ago just to, you know, beta test out their product. And it was, I mean, these things are incredible. I mean, they're, they're they are super cool. Uh, it's a veteran owned cooler company, all of it made right here in the USA, employing actual Americans, almost like, every, um, unlike almost every other cooler company where those are probably made in China. Uh, and the price is less than those of other premium coolers you're going to see in the stores or see advertised. And they're in stock with no supply chain issues. It is officially spring. Warmer weather will eventually hit. So we're going to Vegas at the end of this week. It's going to be 95 there every single day. Unfortunately, I can't take my Tyga cooler with me there. But if you want to you want to see what they have and look into maybe getting something custom designed for you, all right, um, go to tygacoolers.com. That's T as in Tom, A-I-G-A coolers.com. T-A-I-G-A coolers.com. And they will design one just for you, your family, friends, your clients. They make for great gifts. Tyga Coolers, tygacoolers.com is where you want to go. All right, so let's get into what is in the montage today. Let me tell you who Larry Hogan is, the governor of Maryland. I always have had respect for... Well, you've got 360 places in your body from the top of your neck down to your feet called joints, and they are essential uh, for movement and flexibility and activity, especially as we get older. Uh, but as we get older, they also become little hubs for these things called inflammation, and that's what's likely the cause of your chronic pain. That's that lingering achiness and soreness that just won't go away in places like your back or your knees or your neck or your hips, and that's why you're looking for an all-natural anti-inflammatory that is backed by going on three decades of clinical research and going on a third year of me using it daily. It's a fantastic product. I even take it with me when I'm on the road. It's called Omega XL. If you want to try Omega XL right now, they're offering buy one, get a second bottle for free. When you go to OmegaXL.com slash Steve, once more, that's OmegaXL.com slash Steve, or you can call them at 800-844-4888. Let's welcome in our good friend, Bob Vanderplatz from The Family Leader. Good to see you, brother. How are you? Doing really well. Kind of wish I was in New Orleans right now to take in a championship game, but 
not to be this year. That's kind of your family tradition. You guys go to the Final Four like every year, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't hunt, we don't fish, but our boys and I, we go to the Final Four. Well, it's uh, a tough economy out yeah. there, and so it was a rough year here at the Family Leader. <laughs> no, not no, no. The, the last one we went to was the one in Minneapolis, 2019. Yeah. Then 2020 gets canceled, 2021, restricted fans. And uh, mm-hmm. this year, it's called Grandkids, Girlfriends, and New Job. And oh, the boys you. couldn't make it. Only dad could go, and I didn't want to be the loner that does that. So, so all right. <laughs> watch it on TV. That's all right. You only missed one of the greatest semifinal games of all time. You'll oh, get I over it, right? It. Yeah. Just from a distance. So this is a, uh, this is a key juncture right now on the political calendar around the country. Tell us why. Well, it's a key juncture because uh, just like in Iowa and many other states, uh, legislative sessions are wrapping up. And so what happens, they, they convene in January and everybody sings kumbaya, we all love each other, it's going to be a great session, we're willing to work across the aisle, all this stuff. And now it gets into the heat of the moment. And this is when decisions get made. And there are some crucial decisions that need to be made, especially in light of a lot of stuff that we're seeing, especially with the leadership of Ron DeSantis in Florida and taking on Disney. I think states right now need to, especially red states, uh, led by conservative principled governors like Kim Reynolds, uh, we need to deliver on school choice and we need to start stripping public education of all the peripheral stuff and get back to core competency, that's all we're funding. But it's time to make some bold moves, especially in education right now. I think for parents, for kids, and even for those teachers who did not go into teaching so they could question what a gender is. Uh, So I think it's time to get back to common sense. So what is the legislation that is being debated and discussed right now? I know it passed out of our state Senate last week. The governor, Governor Reynolds, is saying, hey, th- hey, I'm all for this legislation. I want it to be signed. What is it? Well, it's basically saying that, you know, that, more, that parents have more options with their kids when it comes to private school or homeschool and providing some fun. It's still not where we want it to be. Where we want it to be, dollars follow the kids because that's true competition. And we believe competition is good in education. That's what we're pushing for. Uh, Governor Reynolds is big into school choice. Uh, I think, and we talked about this before on your show, Steve, COVID wasn't good for a lot of reasons, but what it was good for, it exposed parents to what's being taught in the public school because of remote learning. And so a lot of parents started to wake up saying, I can't believe this is in my child's curriculum. And so what we're saying is not only give parents the choice to go to private school, to go to homeschool and create real a real competitive environment in education. But being a former public school teacher like myself, uh, you can't let the public schools alone. Uh, you need to clean up what's being taught in those systems. And what we've done, uh, education has become a catch-all. Public education has become a catch-all for everything. And that's allowed all this garbage to come in that it's mandated we do this in the curriculum. I'm thinking we need to strip that. So. The bill that's being debated in Iowa now is not a bill that would allow funding to go with the not, child not, to the building not level? Not complete funding. As a matter of fact, it, it goes on on poverty rates. So it's means that, tested. Yeah. As well as, you know, SDOs, which are basically student scholarships, you know, that you can get. Well, what we'd like to, now those are steps in the right direction. You're saying I'm, I'm looking at school choice or I'm serious about school choice. We would like to see, listen, that kid doesn't go to that school. The money doesn't go to that school. The, the money follows the kid. And that would allow, say, a Joshua Christian Academy uh, in inner city Des Moines all the way to Des Moines Christian uh, where your child goes to school. You know, now you got competition of, of where those funds go. So is this legislation intended to be basically a camel's nose under the tent? I, I, think, I think that's what it is. It's like we want to move kind of at the speed of what they think they can move at this point, what they can get. Um, The fact is, when you take a look at this, you'd think, well, you know, Republicans are in favor of this, but Democrats are opposed to this. Uh, That's not necessarily the case. It really kind of goes now on rural urban lines. Urban urban legislators are much more open to say, let's have school choice, because they're seeing the collapse of urban schools. Your rural school districts, uh, they're still motivated by Friday night lights. my uncle, my aunt, maybe my, my son, my daughter, they all are employed by the school districts, mm-hmm. one of the biggest employers in small towns. 
So let's protect that public school. I came from Northwest Iowa. We had, we had great private school systems, uh, Western Christian, Unity C Christian, uh, Granville Spalding, Bishop Heelan, all good private schools. Uh, but we also had really good public schools. And I think the reason we had really good public schools is because parents had a real choice, a real opportunity of where to send their children. So I, I know people across the country that are involved uh, in trying to get school choice done in their states. And they are hearing a similar lament that it's within their own base that for the most part, it's rural uh, people in their own uh, in their own base on the right that push back on this for the reasons that you just said. You bet. There's also concern amongst homeschooling communities and, and other uh, kind of conservative enclaves that this could be a camel's nose under the tent the other way. Where government could take where control. Where government could, could take control. Let, let's tackle each of those two for a you minute. You bet. All right? Because the first one to me is, let me grant your premise, okay, that you have a legit concern about losing a central identity employer in your rural community. All right. What then is your alternative solution? This would be my counter question. If, if I were in, a, you get, if like if, if the school choice people hired me to be a spokesperson you bet. and go talk to these audiences, all right, my, my, my counter question would be, what is your realistically achievable counter solution? to the fact that the schools are Satan's youth ministry and that they are the number one repository for uh, the spirit of the age because it doesn't can't make its own children, taking yours, reprogramming them, and then turning them against you. What is your alternative? Do you think we'll just get rid of public? Well, get rid of public education? Cool. How would we do that? You know what I'm trying to... What is your achievable goal then for okay great that you protected your three square mile community or at least you think it's correct it's something tells me if we went into your rural school and looked at the curriculum there'd be a lot of the spirit of the agey stuff in there too Without question it may not just be as blatant as what is being asked now uh or asked of you know to educate now with the gender stuff but all the other godlessness that has been embedded in the system for 30 years I'm, I'm guessing, for example, your kids aren't doing science out of a Ken Ham book, right? So right. it's all the same spirit of the AG stuff. So then what's your solution for giving the population centers complete, total um, indoctrination over to the enemy? What's your answer well, well, for that? Well, first of all, enemy, the enemy does not give ground. So the enemy's not saying, tell you what, I'll let these rules oh, school yeah, yeah, districts. Yeah, yeah, you have your they, podunk communities. They, they, we'll they, never make it yeah, out they, there. They can do right. whatever they want to do. I'm not only worried about your urban. Absolutely not. This is a comprehensive indoctrination. They need to know that, number one. So protect your kids. But then two is give examples of, and I'd say go up to Northwest Iowa. There's other places across this country where, where they could go to say, give examples where local public schools are thriving alongside of local private schools and good homeschool communities. I'm telling you, competition definitely makes it better. And But here's the thing, though. You need to protect that curriculum that's going inside those public schools. And again, uh, back in 1995, 96, uh, I was a high school principal in Sheldon. That's my hometown, rural Iowa, 5,000 people uh, in the community. And there's a thing called human growth and development. And there's a big push then back in the mid 90s about human growth and development to teach safe sex. You guys remember this? Teach safe sex. Mm -hmm. And I remember going in front of the school board and I said to them, listen, because you had to write out your human growth and development plan. I said, if you want me to teach the best math, do you want, or if you, do you want us to teach the best math or the second best math, the best science or second best science? So if you're looking at to keep kids away from sexual diseases or unwanted pregnancies, do you want me to teach the best way to do that, which is abstinence or the second best way to do that? And the good news in that school district, that school board took a six to one stand to say, we teach abstinence. However, that wasn't good enough, meaning the spirit of the age is going to keep pressing in, pressing in, pressing in. Abstinence is no longer taught at the Sheldon Public School District. Why? Because they keep pushing. The enemy does not give ground. Well, you didn't, you didn't, you can't dam a river downstream. You can't, I mean, you can't say, you can't tell locusts 
hey, you can have you can have all this land to feast on, but just leave this parcel of land alone. Exactly. When it's when the locusts are done consuming all of the land you gave them, they don't sit there and say to themselves, you know, we're totally satiated here. We're good. Thank mm-hmm. you. No, they then come to your land. I mean, so yeah. you you've allowed them all of the major population centers. The mm-hmm. idea that you would then be able to hold them off once they've consumed everything else, it's just not realistic. And you remember this thing that we used to call safe schools. And they had their their conference. Oh, yeah, it was the Rainbow Jihad. Yeah, their annual conferences, the LGBTQ, uh, Queer Eye for the Straight Guy was the keynote speaker. It was the Groomer Conference. Uh, They they had a cartoon book out with my picture depicted on it about how I was the enemy type thing. There were school buses. Congrats, by the way. (laughs) But school buses and school vehicles from all over the state, rural and urban, coming to this conference Mm -hmm. to promote an LGBTQ agenda. And that's why I'm saying get your local schools back. Uh, I'm a big defender of public school systems, but when it comes to core competencies, meaning you need to strip away all this other stuff. And some people will push back and go, the public school needs to still be about sex education. And I'm saying let that go. The parents, let go the churches, communities, get it out of the schools because what that becomes is a platform now for Disney and everybody else just to push their garbage into your local school district. So then the other argument I wanted to tackle with you on the the homeschooling side, the idea, well, this is the camel's nose under the tent, sure. the other way for the state to come in and take control. Um, first of all, why are you required? You're not required to take any no. state money or anything of that nature. So I don't, help me understand how that complaint works because I don't get that one either. Well, well, the reason that complaint is theirs because of their history. I mean, uh, homeschoolers, uh, you know, they they were persecuted. They were threatened. And so they, they see that history going, I don't know if I want government intervention at all again. So one is, Steve, you're right. They don't have to take the money. But two is, I think we're wiser today. That homeschool kids perform exceptionally well. And I think legislators can walk and chew gum at the same time and make sure that there's provisions within the homeschool community where they don't have to run that threat. But I think your big thing you need to do, A, get school choice where dollars follow the kids, but two, strip that public school curriculum and get it back to core competencies where two plus two equals four, not boy boy should be a girl or girl should be a boy, whatever it is. Get it back to your core competencies that we're paying them to do. Final thing then, what for those in those two camps, what's their all what what do they offer as alternatives? What have you seen this legislation for or this legislative session, for example, in our own state? What's the alternative then to at finally doing something about um, and shutting the spigot off of Satan's youth ministry? What, what do they say? Well, we're not going to do those two things. Okay. What do they ask to do instead? See, I, I don't think they, they have much of an alternative right there. As a matter of fact, with, with government. So basically, let's just poison a majority right. of kids because okay. I got to keep my public school yeah. job. Let, and Let's keep things going really? as going because, okay. you know, it's right. it, sounds, we're, we're still motivated by the Friday night That sounds night at least lights. quasi-demonic, I, 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 so that's I, great. Yeah, I, okay. I wear the jersey type thing. And I think what's good is that more governors, you see DeSantis doing it. Uh, DeSantis saying, listen, you're going to push this stuff on my second and third graders in Florida or my kids in Florida. You see Governor Reynolds reading from uh, books uh, that are in our school libraries saying this is the garbage that's in these schools. I think it's time to reform the system completely. And we have legislators, legislatures and governors say in 31 states, they could run this. They could run this and take control back to where the federal government doesn't have the say inside your education system. Real quick, I've only got 90 seconds here. I just got an email from somebody. If the money follows the kid with the control from the government, also follow the money in the kid. Help me understand why the person who has the money isn't the one in control. Help me understand that. I have the... Isn't that why governments tax us so they can have control? If they have the money, that means they have what? Control. If I have the money, am I not in control? Tell me how that works. I don't understand that. Well, you're right. You answered both questions. One is if you have the money, you are in control. But two is the government has no money. The the government's only money is your money. And so therefore you only give them the power by by what you're willing to consent them to give the power. And so if you have the money, you're in control, you have the power, give true school choice to parents and to kids and let parents again be the one who embraced Deuteronomy 6. Teach them when they wake up in the morning, when they're in the way during the day, 
when they go to bed at night. Good stuff, man. Appreciate right. it. God bless, guys. Do you have any quick thoughts on this before we get out of here? I mean, you're the public school parent here in the room. Well, he's right going back about they want everything. Again, I live in Carlisle, Iowa. This is not in the middle of the metro or anything like that. And it is absolutely there. And we, you know, choosing to go somewhere else, there, there's no places now. I can't find an island for my family, even within Catholic school. It's there too. So be, because because this competition that Bob's talking about does not exist, we need to bring it to bear. I mean, a mutual friend of ours uh, just sent me a note about what's going on in a um, Carlisle kind of district in the state that uh, he lives in with his daughter, who's a teacher there, mm -hmm. and was just brought in to, today and told, hey, you're going to have to teach all this gender stuff. And she's like, no, I'm not teaching that, right? And so that the idea that you are going to move somewhere – that you will be permanently immune from what is going on nope. or a metastasizing tumor. It's just, it's a rationalization. It's just not true. Got to fight. Yep. We'll come back. Uh, Ask Me Anything for Hour 2 is next. Back with Hour 2, live and on demand here on Blaze TV, radio, and podcast. I'm Steve Dace. He's Todd Erzin. He's Aaron McIntyre. Email the show, steve at stevedace.com, D-E-A-C-E. Like me, Steve Dace. Well, you, you can like me if you'd like. Um, you don't have to. Uh, but you can like me on Facebook, MeWe, Parlor, and Gab. You can follow me on Twitter, at Steve Dace Show, and Getter, at Steve Dace Show as well. Get clips of the show over at rumble.com slash Steve Dace Show. And then if you are a podcast listener of the show, thank you so very much. We appreciate each and every one of you, leave us a five-star review if you wouldn't mind. Hit subscribe or follow. And thank you to all of you that have done those things because I'm told they do something to help grow the show. I don't understand what that is, but you know me. I always just believe whatever I am told. Uh, hour two. This portion of the show brought to you by our friends over at Raycon, the wireless earbuds that are the best way to bring the audio with you. No matter what you're doing or where you're going, and I've tried a lot of different earbuds. None of them have done a better job of keeping the noise out and the sound you're looking for in they, than Raycon. Uh, they, they just don't budge. They fit perfectly. Um, they also, though, if, 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 you, if you're like, well, you know, I got kids at the house. I'm not sure I want to cancel all the noise out. Got, I get you there. There's an awareness mode for when you need to also listen to your surroundings. So they provide that flexibility too. I mean, there's a reason why whenever I get a new pair of these, they don't last very long unless I hide them. All right. One of my teenagers uh, ends up uh, saying, uh, hey, dad, do you mind? And then I say no. And then I never get them back. All right. So if you want to give Raycon a shot and just remember, you'll probably have to hide them from your teenager as well. Uh, they offer eight hours of playtime and a 32-hour battery, battery life that is priced just right for you, and that's why they've got 48,000, more than 48,000 five-star reviews. That's a lot. Steve Day Show listeners right now get 15% off your Raycon order at buyraycon, R-A-Y-C-O-N, Raycon. Buyraycon.com slash Steve. Get 15% off right now at buyraycon.com slash Steve. Aaron, are these questions on the screen? They are. Okay, because yes. the screen over here is out. It's still out. It's okay. still out. So I'm going to have to listen very intently. Uh, so it is time for I will try our, to fix as you're answering the thank first Thank you. One. It is time for our weekly Ask Me Anything. Uh, this week we have gone to our growing uh, follower Following, that's the word, uh, our growing following over on Gab. And you guys, uh, we got upwards, almost about 100 questions from what I saw. So, yeah, they're frisky over there. So that's good to know. And of course, I've not looked at any of these at all. Uh, I don't know what's coming. Todd has hand selected himself the ones that will be answered. And Aaron, you may fire when ready. We'll begin with a nice easy one from Sue. You'll never pick this question, but asking as a female, what is the dude code? So, the dude code called for Todd to select this question when you put him on it like, well, you would never, you'd never pick this, right? I mean, that, that's almost like a homing beacon for the dude code. Oh, you'd never talk about this or you'd never bring it up. That greatly increased unintentionally the odds that yes. would be selected, right? Yes. Okay. The, the dude code, Sue, is, um, it's, it's, an, it's a code of honor. An expectation for dudes. 
Okay? Dudes need expectations, and they need standards that they have to honor. Without them, I don't know if you've noticed, maybe, I don't know, last 50 years of American history, but without those things, we tend to, uh, we tend to, we tend to wander off of the narrow road, right? Yes. So, so dudes need expectations. They need accountability. But then it can't be expectations for expectations sake. It can't be accountability for accountability sake. It, it requ- a dude requires an achievement to unlock. I mean, what's the, what's the point of why I am doing this? Dudes are very result-oriented, very outcome-based creatures. Okay, so um, what's the game? What are the rules? Who's keeping score and how do I win? Every dude asks themselves that question about every choice they face in their life from the moment that their mental capacities are developed enough to begin that level of thinking to the moment that their mental capacities are no longer functioning enough to continue that level of thinking. And it doesn't matter the dude's religion, race, custom, nationality, era. This is how all dudes think at all times when we're in our right minds for as long as we have access to them. What is the game? What are the rules? Who's keeping score? And how do I win? So dudes need a goal. That's why for you ladies, you do want to play hard to get. You don't want to make it too easy. But if it gets to be too hard, dude will eject if he feels like the goal is not achievable. Or he should, but then he would be, if he didn't, then he's a desperate loser you don't want any part of who will stalk you and he's in clear violation of the dude code, right? Okay. So that's what it is. It's a code of honor and expectations that dudes have to live up to, even down to the trivial because for a dude, everything has to be a competition. If it's not, if everything's not a competition, dudes will go soft and you will, well, you'll have a culture that looks a lot like the one you have now. You guys want to add anything to that? Is that sufficient? I would just say um, everything, everything is aimed at making a dude uh, showcase his God-given uh, instinct to th- show strength and boldness. I like that too. Yep. You want to add anything? No, I think uh, now she's without excuse. Now, now you know, and so this this show should make infinitely more sense to you. Indeed. Yes. Even well, when it apparently makes no sense whatsoever. <laughs> uh, we'll move on. Uh, new rule: uh, If you don't use your real name on any of these social media, I'm just going to butcher your screen name. Apologies if uh, Reven Chist, if that's your real name. How should Christians respond? When God uses adversarial foreign leaders to punish nations who have turned from him. The thought has been on my mind as Russia invades Ukraine that supposedly has a large Christian population, but is one of the most corrupt nations in the world. How are we Christians in America any different? So, um, no differently than we would in any other situation. What, what glorifies God, what is true? I, I, I get the emotional tug. I'm going to admit something on the air that I have not admitted on the air that I have admitted to a few people. You too, I have, but I've not admitted this on the air, but for the, and this is why I was hesitating as I was pondering how to answer this question. So I will admit something to all of you. I have a borderline level of unbiblical disdain for our government and Western democracies for the most part as a whole after the last 24 months and counting. The amount of people that they murdered, or even through the act of allowing them to die, that they injected with this questionable substance at best, poison at worst, um, 
the amount of our grandparents they left to die alone, the amount of our children they have robbed of two years of their lives they can't get back and want to continue to mask, robbing them some more. Should I go on? You guys know all the reasons why. I do. It's, it's, I have to check myself. It's, it, it is an almost, un, it, it, I have, you know, that whole thing in your anger, do not sin. I, I'm, 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 I'm very angry. And the reason why we have to be cautioned against making everything binary that's not binary. It's funny. The only thing that we don't want to be binary in our, in Western culture today is the one thing that God says absolutely is binary. Male and female, right? It's, it, it, it's only the things that we, that God says are, have to be binary. Are you a saint or a sinner? Are you saved from your sins or are you dead in them? That's a, it's one or the other, right? Okay. The things that God says have to be binary and it's not very many, but there are some of them. Those are all the things Western culture says are not binary any longer. And the things that are utilitarian or pagan philosophically, those are the things we're to think of binary. And that's natural for us because we're sinners. So what is the natural way to think within our sinful natures? Once I come to the conclusion that I just detest Western democracies in their current form, and I see them at war with Vladimir Putin. What is the temptation here for me? And probably for many others, what's the temptation? What is it? But just to make him uniquely bad? No, to root for Putin. To root for him. That's the, that's the binary temptation of our, of our craven natures. Here's the problem with that. I'm not supposed to be a prisoner of my craven nature anymore. I have a new identity. My life is not my own. God's spirit is an active work within my life. I'm supposed to have a level of discernment that goes higher and beyond and transcends our earthly binary fallacies. So back to my original answer to your question, brother, it's not, it's not, easy but it's simple we should handle a situation like this like we would anything else what glorifies God and what is true and if we can make that the litmus test and the metric for virtually every dilemma and this is going to be key man because the enemy is in full control now from an information outlet narrative cast, we've gone from media bias to just flat out malfeasance now. In the last few years, you have seen the media bias that we have railed against for a generation, but it still produced true facts. Its spin on those facts was all slanted to, in, into its favored direction, but the facts themselves were not in dispute. Prior to Trump, for example, and you know this, Todd, because I've been chronicling this on this show and writing about it. Prior to Trump, public uh, polling on political races had been pretty accurate for about 20 right. years. Pretty accurate, actually. Now, of course, when you would read their spin on what their own polling data says, it would all be spun in one direction, right? But the data itself was pretty accurate. They can't trust anything now. We've gone from professional bias to just flat out narrative malfeasance. And, and the temptation for us is going to be when we recognize the game plan. Okay, Zelensky's the new Fauci, Putin's the new virus, right? When we recognize how, you know, what the new implementation of the same demonic paradigm is. And that brings me back quickly, by the way, the question I was asked on Friday, the difference between total and utter depravity. Total depravity, can I give you another definition because it applies to this situation? Total depravity is our own spiritual condition. 
that is we cannot rede- that we cannot redeem on our own, but God can through His sovereign grace. Utter depravity is demonic. It would not even seek out. It would reject knowingly, wantonly, reject the grace and mercy if it was made plain to them. It would mock it. It would scorn it. It's demonic. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not that it doesn't know the truth. It doesn't want to. And that's what much of our media is right now. So the enemy is in full control of these narratives and our, we have to, we have to resist the temptation to say and align ourselves with things that clearly go against our values. If I'm being really blunt, that's a test we faced here in our own company a couple weeks ago. Okay. Aligning against things that clearly go against our own values because that is opposed or the person saying those things is opposed by that, which we also are opposed, opposed to. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like I'm totally fine. In fact, I love the idea of Elon Musk buying Twitter. I think it's great. But, but if Elon Musk says, all right, we're going to have total free speech on my, on the Twitter that I now control. But uh, as long as it's anything other than um, Jesus is the only way to salvation. Would I be honoring God if I, if I set that aside and realize, well, look at all the other things that I agree with Elon Musk on. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. No, because what's the very first commandment? I alone am God. What's the second commandment? Don't make any other gods. I've just treated Elon Musk as if he is what? God. God. So we have to really make sure we keep it simple here. What, what, that's why I didn't even say what's the truth first. What glorifies God first? Because the truth is, even if Elon Musk did that, from a humanistic standpoint, would, 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 would it still be a place that had more free political speech than the current iteration of Twitter? Sure. Yeah. yeah. So if I made the statement, well, okay, yeah, he's still doing that, but it, you know, it's better than Twitter. That's true. It's mm-hmm. better than it was. But is it good? Is it good? No. No. Is it probably better for us from a strategic standpoint, those of us that are in the dissident crowd in the West, anti-global globalist, anti-WEF, all right? Is it, would it be better for us probably if Vladimir Putin whooped the World Economic Forum's ass in Ukraine? Yeah. Probably, yeah. Would it be good? Would it be good? No. No. Better and good are not always the same thing. And so I think that's our challenge as believers. What glorifies God, which is another way of saying, what's good? What is objectively good? And then what is true? Does that work? Yes. Okay. That was excellent. Thank you. Next, Sebastian says, it's kind of a fun one. Imagine if Trump won in 24 and came to you for advice with the caveat whatever you advised him to do he would do what would be the top three things you would advise number one take more direct ownership of your administration stop copping out and delegating so you avoid accountability take more direct ownership this is this isn't you need to run this like trump empire it's your name on the marquee don't be a micromanager, but manage it more. No more Jared Kushner's, no more Mike Pence's, no more Debbie Burks, no more. Now, I'm not saying don't listen to people that have expertise. You don't, but you're the you're the guy in the chair. Be the man in the chair. Take more direct accountability and ownership of that which bears your name. Don't be looking for preemptive excuses. Trust your instincts. You didn't get to be a billionaire by luck. So take more accountability and ownership. Don't be doing managerial prenups. 
We're already, I'm already in my mind negotiating with the out clause thing, with what my out clause and excuse is if this blows up in my face. No, you're the president. Failure's not an option. So don't even be thinking about that. Don't even contemplate that. The amount of decisions you have to make in a day would drive you mad. Don't be thinking about what the out clause is. Take direct accountability and ownership of your White House. No more Svengali's. No more feudal lords. No more Jared Kushner's. We elected you. We want you. You make the decisions here. Number two. Surround yourself with strong men. Often the pattern with Trump has been as a candidate and as a president. He's totally okay with strong women, particularly when they're smoke shows. The men around him tend to be betas. No more lone, no more you want to be the lone rooster in the hen house. No more Mike Pence types. None of that. No more uh, Sean Spicer's. Rince. What was his first name? I even forgot. Rince. Rince. <laughs> okay. No, no more of that. All right. No more Rex Tillerson's. No more. Number three. The firings. Imprisonments. And excommunications will continue until morale improves. It is time for you to earn all of those, some of those nasty, at least a little bit, all the nasty nicknames you get anyway, even while being a pushover in your own White House. Repeat after me, Mr. President. After all, it's a slogan you made famous. You're fired. I love the smell of firings in the morning. If I've not fired anybody by noon, I'm just not doing my job any day that ends in Y. There's 300,000 plus employees in the executive branch. At least one of them needs fired every damn day. Fire more. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're like Al Pacino in Sen of a Woman. F you and F you and, and absolutely F you. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're all fired. Can't get enough of it. Even if even if you make a mistake and have to rehire people, you just love saying it so much. If they're they're gonna call you an autocrat and an authoritarian and a fascist and everything anyway, might as well at least earn a little bit of that backlash. Because what we saw this last time was I just let my 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 the people under me just walk all over me and I get called all those same names anyway. Isn't that we were just dissing Larry Hogan about last yeah. hour? Yeah. So, number one, take more direct accountability and ownership of your administration. Number two, stop hiring beta males. They're actually the most treacherous ones. Because with an alpha male, you know what motivates him. He wants your seat. He wants to be where you're at. I've quoted this many times in the past. They once asked legendary Alabama football coach Bear Bryant, what was his secret to success of hiring so many assistant coaches who went on to be great head coaches themselves? And he said, what's the point of hiring a guy that doesn't know something I don't know or can't do something I, I don't know how to do? Otherwise, I just keep the money my damn self. You want men who want your seat. At least then you know what their motivation is. And you can use that to spur them to excellence. Beta males, though. Give me affection. Give me attention. I don't. I want to be liked. I can't handle the criticism. Dude, you can't do anything with that. Nothing with that. The beta male is the one you look at and say, et tu brute. At least the alpha will come at you at your face. You know what to do with that. You're Donald friggin' Trump. And number three, my 2024 campaign theme, you're fired. 
Everybody's fired. Every day, just firing people every day. If I hear one more time that we couldn't fire Fauci because of what the media would have oh. said, I'm going to start removing limbs and they won't be mine. Even if that's true, don't ever say that ever again. Like ever again. Literally. Unless, unless now you've gone from selling COVID to selling Cialis. Because you're lowering T levels and sperm counts all over the fruited plain. Every time you say this, stop saying that, please. On behalf of the dude code, Sue just asked us, please stop saying. Did you beat the media or not? Stop it. In fact, I could take all three of these points and I could boil them down into something I just said a minute ago. Be Donald bleeping Trump. That's my advice. Moving on. Family Patriot says, which situation bothers you more? Three cultural events took place recently, caused me to reflect on growing up in the 80s and 90s. Losing these anchor points are tough. Bruce Willis forced to retire. Phil Collins' last concert with a cane in hand. Or the Foo Fighters drummer dying. Which one has you more reflective of your past and where you are in life right now? Mm, that's an intriguing question. It would be what happened with Taylor Hawkins. Um, now... You know, we don't know what the cause of uh, Bruce Willis's condition is. It is one of the more reported adverse side effects in the VAERS database. But he was also pushing 70 years old. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's, he's, he's lived a pretty good life, you know, pretty full life. Um, you look at the case of Phil Collins, he's got to be pushing that, maybe even older than that, you know. So, again, he's lived a pretty full life. Taylor Hawkins had just turned 50. And, you know, had the world by the short hairs. And how many drugs did they find in a system, in a system they're saying? Ten? Yeah, that's what they're reporting. And that just, that's just a, that's, that's a tragedy. That's someone who just, no amount of fame, no amount of acclaim, no amount of experience was fulfilling. Nothing filled that God-shaped hole in the heart. And it did, wasn't his heart like twice the weight it was supposed Correct. to be. So he weighed his own heart down with substances that also weren't going to leave him any more satisfied and fulfilled. To me, that's the tragedy. Even if Willis's mental condition were an adverse side effect from the jab, we're still talking about somebody pushing 70 years old. He's lived to see his his own children have, are now grown adults. Phil Collins has lived pretty close to a full life at this point at his age. The Hawkins thing to me is the one thing that is the definite tragedy on that list. Because it was totally senseless and totally needless. And it's and it's there's all kinds of people. I know within our ecosystem we talk about this amongst ourselves and shows like this all the time. But folks, outside of our ecosystem, there's all kinds of people who have no idea what a VARES database is. You know what I'm saying? No idea. Taylor Hawkins is not unfamiliar with the classic rock star drug overdose trope. Because no one is! Right? Mm -hmm. Which tells you that um, there was just um, a big empty there. Anyway, pardon the pun. Before we move on, um, tell you about our friends over at My Patriot Supply. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but you never know. Because the next time they say it can't happen here, and it happens here, are you going to be ready? We've now got other world leaders out coming out now talking about food shortages are on the horizon. Make sure you're prepared with our friends at My Patriot Supply. They are the nation's largest self-reliance company specializing in long-term food storage. You'll find many different sizes of emergency food kits that will fit your needs. Each kit packed with a wide variety of delicious meals you can rely on for up to 25 years with proper storage. 
uh, that you can rely on when it goes down or your grocery store supply chain goes down. Don't pass up the chance to get this long-lasting backup food you're going to need. All kits are in stock. They ship immediately. And you can get free shipping on whatever order that you make. And it will arrive discreetly at your home. You can get free shipping on it right now when you go to preparewithdace.com. D-E-A-C-E. Free shipping when you go to preparewithdace.com. I think also the fact that Hawkins was 50, I think, makes it even worse. Mm -hmm. One thing, 2025, never had any money before, you know, but he's 50. He should be at the point in his life that fulfillment should be easier to see and contentment to understand, given all the success he's had, and it still eluded him. I think that makes it even more of a tragedy. We'll come back with more. Ask me anything in a moment. It's the only protein bar that's ever allowed me in one day to indulge in two of my favorite sweet tooth treats. Uh, Post-workout this morning, I had the Shamrock flavor of Built Bar that they put out uh, for St. Patty's Day to mimic a Shamrock shake. And then uh, last break uh, over the noon hour, I got my second protein bar in with uh, part of my uh, paranormal pumpkin stash from last fall. Dude, I had shamrock and pumpkin spice in one day. That's about as good as it gets for good old Steve Dace right there. All right. Is and this your Samwise Gamgee? There's good in this world, Frodo. Yes. There, yeah, <laughs> yes. Yes. Let's see, we need to Better apply. than the taters, yeah. Frodo. We to, yes. We need to apply the first question to this instantly. Ma'am, you might think this is a dude code violation for him to obsess about sweets that much because he obsesses. Yes. He's actually codifying the dude code. You are you are allowed to have violations if they are obsessive. Yeah, because it's because it's it's a contrarian take. Yes. Yes, yeah. Contrarian takes because that cause the dude the dude code elevates critical thinking. Even if you're wrong, it just wants you to critically think rather than just to open your yes. mouth and say ah uh, to whatever yes. the system pours forth. Yes. So if you want to try all of their phenomenal flavors, the greatest protein bar of all time, all of them covered in real chocolate, and you know what? Just try like the everyday variety box with the double chocolate, the salted caramel, the coconut, the cookies and cream, the peanut butter brownie. That's what got me hooked originally. And then they grew and they started making all these specialty flavors. But it was originally just the the good old variety box that got me hooked on these. They're just absolutely phenomenal. Loaded with protein and flavor, not loaded with carbs, calories, and sugar. Go to built.com right now. Use my last name, Dace, as your promo code and get 15% off when you do. Promo code D-E-A-C-E to get 15% off at built.com. Let's continue with our Ask Me Anything Good questions from our Gab following this week. So these have been kind of intriguing, Todd. Thank you. This one comes from Cyan B666. Not sure what that's all about. Yikes. On, uh, on second thought, maybe we should <laughs> yeah. move on. Okay. Uh, greetings and salutations. My question is if Mr. Dace will ever put in effort to grow his followers on Gab. If you want much larger group of followers on Gab, you need to interact with Gab way more. A Steve Dace Gab TV channel would be amazing. On Gab, you can create your own groups. A group that had nothing but the daily clips of Aaron's rundown would be amazing. You could easily get over 100,000 followers on Gab if you put in the effort. Thanks for all the work you and your team do to get information out. You are exactly correct. And I like the idea of posting the rundown, the montage there. Here's it needs what to be you, posted somewhere. Probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here, here's the thing you guys have to remember, though. So. Okay. This is just a three man outfit here. How many social media platforms are we on right yeah, now? Yeah. And uh, I mean, Facebook, Twitter, MeWe, Parlor, Gab, Getter. So that's six right now. I used to post the rundown on Facebook, but uh, with a few exceptions, you guys just didn't share it or watch it. Rumble all that often. seven. But again, that's Facebook too. I think so. they've unsuspended our YouTube channel, right? Correct. So that's eight. Yeah. I just don't promote it because I hate them. So, um, but that's eight social media platforms. We're just a three-person outfit here, okay? I mean, this is not, we are not Glenn Beck or Steven Crowder with staffs of people that, that we can afford. We'd, we'd love to have that. That's, the, that's kind of the problem is, is we need that kind of infrastructure probably to take our show to the next level because of all the stuff you're talking about. And that's how people consume news and content more than they have in the past, um, on the other hand, I don't have the revenue for that, you know, so we're kind of stuck in this 
middle class no man's land, you know, where we've grown a lot, but probably we're up against a ceiling of growth unless we had more of the kind of um, infrastructure that you're suggesting. But um, I, I'm already generating an, a, a large amount of content and I'd, you know, like to not be a divorce statistic. So I just, I don't interact. Don't feel bad if you're on Gab. I don't interact like almost anywhere. Um, on Facebook, I will post usually a statement to a post because I've noticed people will see my post more beyond their ba banning of me if I post in the comments, but that's not even working anymore. So I'm, I'm probably going to stop just doing that. Uh, I almost never read the replies on Twitter. I've read more Twitter replies since I posted a beta of the movie poster over this weekend than I probably have the last five years combined because comment sections on Twitter is where the truth goes to die. It's just it, it, most of it's bots and not worth your time. So I just don't have the time, man. I don't have the time to do it with everything else I have going on. I'm working on stuff we haven't even, we haven't even told you guys about yet, you know? So we need it. I just don't have the infrastructure for it. I don't have a PR team pushing my stuff out there um, either. I just, I don't have the infrastructure for it. I can't afford it. So I, those are all good suggestions, but I either A, don't have the time or the revenue. Next up, Doogie2 says, I've been telling friends for a while that we are currently living through the final stages of a somewhat functioning republic, and the reason many on the mainstream right don't see it is because none of us have ever been through it before, and people think, if only we could get Trump back or just wait till the midterms, I believe we're way past the point of no return. What say Steve, Todd, and Aaron? I mean, I think this is the most likely scenario. I don't know the future. I'm not God, but I've, I've, I've read... Uh, a history book, and I've read the ultimate history book. Um, so this is the most likely outcome of this, is we are kind of whistling past a Romans 1 graveyard here. That's the most likely outcome. And and that's why our show's main creed has been for, I mean, ever since, as long as you guys have worked here, it's it, it, at least it's been revival or bust, that we cannot turn these things around uh, politically. I mean, go back to the previous question. Let's say Trump took my advice. First of all, let's assume my advice is even right. I'm just a kid that went to junior college. Okay, so, but let's let's assume my advice is right, and he took it and was and 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 was even more effective and more consistent than he was his first time around. He's term limited out, can only serve one more term, right? I mean, almost all the pretty much all the good stuff Trump got accomplished his first term, he did unilaterally himself. He couldn't rely on the system to do anything, right? So how would a Joe Biden eliminate, eliminate all that stuff in about 10 minutes after he mm -hmm. took over, right? I mean, Ted Cruz is out there and he's right talking about we're one Supreme Court justice away from losing pretty much every freedom in the Constitution. He's right about that. Is that the system our founders gave us? No. We're literally one presidency to the next. We don't know what our rights are. That, that, that was the system. We don't, no. we don't, the Constitution has a completely 180 degree different interpretation depending on who's in, who's in the White House for four years. Yeah, it's like the saying, our nation is the only one founded on a whim, right? Y yes, well played. Uh, we're always, we're one justice away every time from losing everything. Of course not. Those are, that's, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, late term rep republic nonsense or hijinks or dysfunctional historical, uh, you know, collapse kind of stuff. So um, you're probably right, given what history shows and what his story has shown is, 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 is the outcome of cultures in the situation we find ourselves in today. Now, I don't know that for sure. So I'm going to fight to the end. It's just kind of in my nature to do that anyway, out of spite, if nothing else. But um, I'm also not like a, you know, I, I would take divine judgment collapse over my biggest fear any day of the week. I don't fear a divine judgment collapse. It would be deserved. The Lord give it, the Lord take it the way. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's not like we don't deserve it. My fear, you know, it's like I talked a minute ago about my show, economically, we're kind of in a no man's land where we've grown a lot, but I still can't afford the kind of infrastructure it would take to take the show to another level at the same time. Um, similarly, um, my fear is that we will have an end game in a no man's land, that it, it, it won't be predominantly a divine judgment 
but it'll be a judgment that we self-fulfilled upon each other with some kind of a civil war that my children are sentenced to have to fight because we didn't have the balls to do what must be done within our own politic, peaceably political system because, you know, heaven forbid if I'm a dad at my daughter's swim meet and I stand up and said, this shall not pass, I might get booed. Someone might say something mean. The local newspaper no one still reads might write something bad. I might get a bad comment or 20 on my Facebook page, guys. And we can't have that, right? We couldn't possibly endure and sustain ourselves through that. So let's have our children have to fight this out violently in the streets in the generation to come. That's my biggest fear. And that's one of the driving forces of why I do this the way I do it, trying to avoid that outcome. But divine justice and judgment, I don't sweat that at all. Totally deserved. Frankly, it's only a, it's a testimony to the grace of God that hasn't happened already, given what we have wasted of the birthright. Next up... MJLC777 says, when will you and Todd be willing to, quote unquote, go there with finding the whole truth about 9-11? It seems Aaron gets it and knows the evidence is overwhelming. No, I'm, I'm open to other theories, but I've heard Todd say he's just not willing to believe or discuss it. Why? Love your show. I don't care. I, I don't care. I don't have the capacity for it. I've got a million other things right now I'm trying to stop needles from poisoning people in their arms and re re-adjudicating something that happened 20 years ago and all it spawned was the absolute worst foreign policy decision of all time. Meaning that I don't care about either the quote unquote truth, whatever you may think it is, or defending the honor of the event because the, all the outcomes of it were terrible. We're, well, so all the policies we came out of it with were all terrible. So there's no, there, it doesn't, it's irrelevant. I mean, from the surveillance state to, let's be the world's mall cop, Paul Blart, everything we did was awful. Every decision we made out of this was terrible. So I'm not invested in defending the honor of that, of that event whatsoever. I don't care. That's my answer. I'd, I'd be willing to entertain it, discuss it, just not now. I'm, I'm busy. Got stuff to do, and it has to do with a hundred other issues that are pre preeminent right now but yeah sure show send me something uh compelling uh when we uh save the rest of civilization next up tim is salvation in jesus christ alone off limits when you have daniel horowitz on and why do you guys believe that daniel is unaware yeah. of my <laughs> theological beliefs and i am unaware of it <laughs> gab's an interesting place are you guys un you guys think that we are unaware of one another's beliefs that somehow it never dawned on me that this five foot two dude whose last name is Horowitz might not be uh, might not be messianic, um, and the guy who takes the Sabbath off from work every week, okay, and that Daniel's just completely and totally unaware that one of his best friends in this business believes there is no salvation for our sins outside of Christ. I, I mean, I don't I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> Okay, so I don't, okay, I don't know how to answer that. I don't, uh, other than that answer. I don't know yeah. what other answer to give. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more. Jim, there are already over a thousand college basketball players wow. who have put their yeah, name into the NCAA transfer portal. Was changing the rules to allow, quote unquote, students to transfer without sitting out a year the worst rule change the NCAA has ever made? Oh, no, they've made far worse <laughs> rules. It's not even, they've made far worse ones. This one, will, the market here will correct itself because it goes both ways. It's not just, it's not just the stereotype of, of players got yelled at at practice. So, or my girlfriend dumped me, let me get out of here and put my name in the transfer portal. It's not just that. It's coaches are using it too. Yep. It's coaches are saying, you know, and I'm not, you know, remember, you got the transfer portal out there, you know. I don't know that you'll get to play here with who we have coming in. Have you thought about, you know. Oh, and look, a, yeah. a, new, uh, a new scholarship just opened yeah, up. Yeah, it's so coaches, this is a chance for them to, quote, unquote, process is the name, but it means run players off. This is a way for them to do it when the, when they tried to do it in the past. They'd get ripped by the media 
or other players would then tell other recruits, hey, you don't want to go to that school. That's how they treat us. Now you can just do it officially, and it's totally fine. But, but, the, but it's also new. The market here will eventually work itself out. There's always going to be more players in there than there are spots for because of the nature of the age group we're talking about and how cutthroat and mercenary college uh, coaches are. But it won't, I don't believe it'll be this extreme in a few years because, because we'll have enough cautionary tales that guys will become more sophisticated and they'll realize, oh, wait, the minute I drop out of there, they can recruit to my scholarship. I've lost all my leverage. Let me not do that. And I think what you'll invariably see, but I don't think it'll, I'm not, I'm not sure it'll be from the NCAA because I don't think the NCAA has got a, I think it's 50 50 the NCAA exists two years from now. Mark that down 50 50. Um, if it's just, you know, these sports are regulating themselves then I think they'll, you know, just like there's a free agency time period in the NFL, right? Okay. A time that you can't sign or other sports, you know. Now, if a player's cut and he's available, you can sign him anytime you want. But there's a period where you can go get free agents when their contracts expire. And then there's a period of time when you cannot, okay? I, I foresee that the transfer portal will do that. That there will be a, a period of time where now you can go in and be eligible at your next school. And if you don't make that window, then you know we're not doing this every single day all year long. I suspect that will eventually happen. You know, spring and summer are the seasons for finally getting outdoors and entertaining pool parties, barbecues. But if your yard looks like a plant cemetery, you're not going to enjoy it as much. So get your place looking like a resort. And it's easy with our friends over at Fast Growing Trees when it comes to caring for your plants. Know how it matters. That's why FastGrowingTrees.com's experts curate thousands of plant varieties that will thrive in your specific climate, location, and needs. There's no waiting in lines. No messy cars from over or from hauling plants all over town. You just order online or over the phone. Your plants are shipped directly to your door in just one or two days. They're, plus, their growing and care service advices are available 24-7 if you want to use those services. So if you've never had a green thumb, they'll make you feel like you do. One million home, going, home gardeners can't go wrong. They've already seen what FastGrowingTrees.com can do for them. So get your landscaping ready to show it off here this spring and summer. Go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Steve right now. Get 15% off your entire order. 15% off your entire order when you go to fastgrowingtrees.com slash Steve. All right, we're going to stick around here and uh, do a little overtime for Blaze TV subscribers. We will record this for you in just a few minutes and then upload it for you to watch later today. At blazetv.com slash Dace. That's also where you can go to become a Blaze TV subscriber if you're not yet one at blazetv.com slash Dace. For the rest of you, we will see you again tomorrow, noon to 2 Eastern, right after Glenn Beck, the Hall of Famer here on Blaze TV. Until then, John 317.